is a really wonderful occasion. Good afternoon. All right, good afternoon, Lyndon. My name is Mark Hatcher. I serve as the board chairman at Columbus Next Generation Corporation. We are a subsidiary of the great city of Columbus, tasked to do uh, real estate redevelopment and, and influential, impactful projects like this in our neighborhoods. Isn't it so exciting to be here today for this opening? Yeah. Indeed, when we were first presented with this project as a board, one of the first things I thought about, because I travel down Cleveland Avenue for many, many years driving to work, and I would drive past the old Eagle Market and just think about what could be at a site like this. And so to look up and see what's here now is just a real blessing, and it's going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal resource for this community. As we think about the work that went into this project, I want to thank some of our partners. First and foremost, Nationwide Children's Hospital for their work, tireless work and dedication on this project. Community for All People, the Charitable Pharmacy, the City of Columbus Department of Neighborhoods, the South Linden Commission, Regency Construction, Prime Engineering, and certainly last but not least, Columbus Next Generation Corporation, and the hard work of Boyce and Tracy that has gone into making this, this dream a reality for this community. Let's give them all a hand. When you think about how you rebuild a community, you think about some of those foundational types of, of resources. And as we, the work that we've done at NextGen in this community, one of the things that we focused on for a very long time has been food insecurity. And the addition of the charitable pharmacy bringing uh, healthcare and access to healthcare to this community just made this project all the more better. So with that, I wanna thank also our, our elected officials who are here. Obviously the great mayor of the city of Columbus, Mayor Ginther. <laughs> city attorney, Zach Klein. <laughs> Judge Mingo. And Councilman Rob Dorian. So with that, I'm gonna move the program along. I, before I do that, I do have to recognize my board because oftentimes I get the, the honor of speaking at these events and they, they are the, the lifeblood and they keep the, they keep the wheels turning on, at Columbus Next Gen. So if my board members could raise their hands, the ones who are here. I know I saw Josh Corna and Valerie, Josh and Valerie. So just give a, give a recognition to the board at Columbus Next Gen for the hard work and dedication that they put into all of the work that goes into our uh, developments here in Columbus. So with that, I will bring up to, for uh, additional comments the mayor of this great city, Mayor Ginther. Good afternoon. What a great day in Linden, a great day in the city of Columbus. So many folks to thank. I want to thank City Attorney Klein and Tim Robinson, Nationwide Children's Hospital, Reverend John Edgar, Community Development for All People, Director Carla Williams Scott, Ms. Peg, Councilmember Dorn, Taylor Reed, and the Charitable Pharmacy of Central Ohio, Mark Hatcher, Boyce Safford, the team at NextGen, Tara Riviera, and Regency Construction. Uh, and I think I saw him out in the crowd, Nick Bankston, who's the president and CEO of Gladden Community House, but whose heart and soul went into developing the One Linden Plan. And luckily, Nick, you listened to the people of Linden, and that's why we're here today, because the people of Linden uh, are an incredible, incredible group of folks who love this community, this neighborhood, this city. And I think the best days, the brightest days of Linden are still yet to come. And today, we celebrate that. <laughs> Columbus is only as strong as our neighborhoods. They are where we connect with each other and where we live. Our quality of life in our neighborhoods determines the lifeblood and vibrancy of our city. 
When we think about home, we think about the neighborhood we came from. I don't have to tell anyone here what a dynamic historic community Linden is or how deeply committed its residents are to making it the best neighborhood it can be. And I have to say, I think that you have helped spark a renaissance right here where we are standing. We are here because of the people of Linden, an incredible dynamic community, neighbors that have seen an awful lot, an awful lot of challenges, but know that their strength, their resiliency can overcome anything. Many of you saw the new census numbers last month showing that Linda's population grew 17 percent from 2010 to 2020. If you talk to somebody from Linden, they're just getting started. The city's population as a whole grew 15 percent. That means Linden is leading the way as Columbus continues to become a vital 21st century American city and show how collaborations among so many groups can help everyone. What we're celebrating today is a perfect example of what strong partnerships can do. I remember very well in 2017 announcing the beginning of a planning process that we mentioned that created a roadmap for the future of Linden, one Linden, moving forward together into a brighter future. Because of many of you here, that became the one Linden plan. And as many of you told me from the beginning, there are lots of studies and lots of plans on books on shelves. We don't want to be part of the, this process unless you're going to implement and do. Well, today is a celebration of doing, and we're going to continue to do and implement the One Linden Plan. 2019, the city and a number of groups announced an effort to advance the goals of the plan called the 614 for Linden. It's a $20 million, $25 million investment into this area, which is, includes expanded health services, housing, business development, and better access to fresh food. What we're seeing is making good on what we envisioned. Promises made, promises kept. The One Linden Plan and the 614 for Linden are becoming a reality right here with the Fresh Market and Charitable Pharmacy. You'll hear from many of the organizations and partners who made this happen, but I want to offer special thanks to one that is not represented amongst the speakers today, and that is Nationwide. Nationwide's ongoing commitment to the Linden community will make a real difference in the lives of this neighborhood's families and residents for years to come. And one of the ways this impact will happen is through the organization led by our next speaker, Nationwide Children's Hospital has expanded the way we all think of what a hospital can be, in part because of the way it has helped build up neighborhoods in Columbus. And they're doing that in Linden as well. Please welcome the CEO of Nationwide Children's Hospital, Mr. Tim Robinson. Thank you, Mayor. Your leadership has really helped bring this all together and as great as today is, we know that the Fresh Market and Shareable Pharmacy are just the beginning of what we're going to get accomplished with your administration. I'm very happy to be here with you and with everyone here as we celebrate this step and look forward to the future. Nationwide Children's has been a member of the Linden community for 25 years. Our Linden Primary Care Center has seen 115,000 children since 1994, and our school-based programs have cared for more than 2,000 students at Linden McKinley High School in Kip Columbus. But as the mayor said, Nationwide Children's knows that health, me health, care, me health means more than just health care. We're con concerned about a child's overall well-being, whether there's food they can eat, about their ability to succeed in school, or the opportunity for high quality affordable homes or their parents' career options. We want healthy children to grow into healthy adults to create healthy communities. That's why over the last years we have been talking with Linden residents and community leaders on how we can partner with them to address the, com the community's challenges. And that's why early this summer we announced our national model of community involvement the Healthy Neighborhoods, Healthy Families initiative would be coming to Linden. Healthy Neighborhoods, Healthy Families is another example 
of the power of partnership. It started on the south side of Columbus and got a big boost from J.P. Morgan Chase, which has stayed with this initiative as we've moved into Linden. The mayor mentioned a 614 for Linden earlier. More than 25 million that was anchored, a million investment that was anchored by J.P. Morgan Pro Neighborhood Initiative. As the mayor mentioned, we have a crucial we have crucial support from Nationwide, whose generosity has been transformational for helping us for so long. It's expanded our medical and research capabilities, and they've invested in healthy neighborhoods, healthy families. And above and beyond investments we're talking about today, $2 million from the Nationwide Foundation's most recent gift to our Pediatric Innovation Fund will aid efforts to increase affordable housing units in the community. We know firsthand that children's well-being is at the heart of Nationwide's mission, and together we're going to focus on reducing barriers to health care, employment, and education. I also want to thank Barbara and Al Seamer, who are nationally known for their efforts to improve children's lives. And their generosity and deep investment in this community has helped champion what is happening here in Linden. So what is happening next? Through healthy neighborhoods, healthy families, existing homes are being repaired, new high quality affordable homes are being built, workforce development classes are getting, pre getting people pre prepared for jobs, and young children are taking part in kindergarten readiness and so much more. A crucial part of Healthy Neighborhoods, Healthy Families initiative is the fresh market. It's a symbol of what it already is and what is to come in Linden. Now I am at the pleasure of introducing someone who has been the guiding spirit of healthy neighborhoods and healthy families and all it has accomplished over the past 10 years. He, led, he leads the organization called Community Development for All People and he has helped show me and Nationwide Children's what can be accomplished when a dedicated, dedicated group of people come together for a common cause. He may look like your idea of a gentle pastor, but there is one who is he is one who has a great sense of purpose and who fights hard for people every day, Reverend John Edgar. Thank you, Tim. Your innovative leadership, combined with your passion for children and the neighborhoods where those kids live, is at the heart of bringing to this dream to fruition today. Now, Community Development for All People, we're a faith-based nonprofit, and our mission is to improve the quality of life for people and their families by moving forward with various social determinants of health. One of our most impactful endeavors is the All People's Fresh Market down on Parsons Avenue. It's the largest point of distribution of free food anywhere in the state of Ohio, and it has been able to serve over 40,000 people annually. We are excited, we really are excited to have a second expression of that fresh market right here in this amazing facility. Now these markets are not traditional food pantries. Instead, the Linden Market will provide almost exclusively fresh fruits, vegetables, and dairy products. The idea is really simple. We want to make it easy for people to have access to free food so they can eat healthier in order to live healthier. Our model shopper is going to come every single week. We'll come into that fresh market and make decisions about meals for her family by looking at what's on these shelves and then we'll build out the rest of that menu using her SNAP benefits in another store. This is an exciting opportunity for us to do so much more. In fact, the Linden Market is twice as big as the market on Parsons Avenue. It has an amazing walk-in cooler and freezer. On the side of the building, there's this delightful patio area where people can hang out and build relationships. And inside, there's a meeting room where we'll offer classes on health and wellness to those who shop. Yes, I invite you to look around and realize you and I dwell inside a divine economy of abundance, not scarcity. When we share what we have, no matter how meager it may seem to each of us, God takes it and multiplies it, and amazing things can happen. So as I draw to a close, I just want to thank some of those folks who have been giving forward. We've heard some of them mentioned already. I want to start by returning to Boyce Safford, because Boyce, the head of NextGen, is the one who had the vision 
the courage and maybe even the craziness to decide to buy the old Eagle Market, believing it could become something else. And without Boyce, none of this would have occurred. I also want to give a big shout out to Mid-Ohio Food Collective because that's where all the free food comes from and this wouldn't work without them. We've heard references already to Nationwide Insurance and they are an amazing partner. In addition to everything else, they paid for this gigantic walk-in freezer and cooler and they are providing about half of the operating money for the market. We're equally indebted and grateful to Alan Barb Seamer for their investments in this market. Yes, it's amazing what can happen when we work together. And before I finish, I want to say thank you just to the people in Linden who dreamed up the One Linden Plan, the folks in the Area Commission, and I am very grateful to Adam Troy at New Salem Baptist and others in the faith community who are stepping forward. Together, together we can make a world of difference. Well, I've been talking about food as medicine in this market. But this building also is home to another amazing nonprofit, the Charitable Pharmacy of Central Ohio. And it is my privilege to introduce now their executive director, Taylor Reed. <laughs> Well, good afternoon, and thank you all for being here today. Reverend Edgar, thank you. The Charitable Pharmacy of Central Ohio has worked together with Reverend Edgar and Community Development for All People for a long time, and we're happy that now we're gonna be able to be under one roof together um, with the fresh market that you help operate. The Charitable Pharmacy of Central Ohio was established 11 years ago in 2010 as a local solution to the national problem of unaffordably high medication costs. We are the only pharmacy in Franklin County that provides pharmacy services to patients at no charge and qualifies patients up to 12 months at a time. Patients qualify for free medicines when their family income is less than 200% of the federal poverty line. The continuity of care we are able to provide is essential and important for patients with multiple chronic conditions that require those ongoing medications and pharmacist services. As pharmacists though, we know that to help our patients and communities reach healthier outcomes, we must also address the social determinants of health. And the team that is here today, the coalition that has been built, and the partnership we have with the Fresh Market and Nationwide Children's and the Healthy Homes Initiative is doing that right here in Linden. It's an amazing facility, and there are so many people that we need to thank. On behalf of my board, of directors and the staff of the Charitable Pharmacy, I'd like to give special thanks to the City of Columbus, the Franklin County Board of Commissioners, the Franklin County Office on Aging, the United Way of Central Ohio, AstraZeneca's Healthcare Foundation, Cardinal Health, the Osteopathic Heritage Foundation, Ohio State's Wexner Medical Center, Nationwide Children's Hospital, Ohio Health, Mount Carmel Health System, AEP Foundation, our friends at the Columbus Foundation, the Margaret and Robert Walter Foundation, Bob Weiler and Company, and of course, the West Ohio Conference of the United Methodist Church. But the reason this wonderful facility, yes, let's give a round of applause. That's a lot of people to thank, and it is in many hands that we make this come together. Thank you. But the reason this amazing building is here is through the hard work of our contractor, Regency Construction Services. Many of you know Regency is known for its work with clients that have the public good in mind, and that's what they've done here. So without further ado and much pleasure, I welcome their founder and president of Regency Construction, Ms. Terry Rivera. Thank you, Taylor. First, I want to congratulate Next Generation, the City of Columbus, Nationwide Children's Hospital, the Linden community, and all others who had a hand in helping make this amazing project happen. The Linden Market represents the heart of the community while the building was gaining new life. It was important to everyone involved to maintain key elements of its history in the design. So right behind me, we were able to keep the columns. And the colors, as you see on the exterior, 
uh, to maintain the building's heritage. And if you have a chance to look at the before pictures that are up here underneath the mansard, um, it'll really give you some perspective as to uh, what I'm uh, highlighting here. The building had good bones, as we like to say, um, so we didn't have to change much of the structure. We were able to keep it intact. At the same time, the updates also reflected the importance of inviting the community into the space. So right behind me is the new entrance with all the new and enlarged storefront openings. And off to the right around the corner, when you have a chance to go through the building, there's new glass overhead doors on the market side with a patio to open the space to the community. On a day like this, it would be so awesome to be able to sit out there. The updated building envelope included a new roof and a mansard framing, which helps to keep the building warm and dry. At the end of the day, everyone involved is so proud that the building is still recognizable as the Linden Market you all know and love, just with an updated look and function. I founded Regency 28 years ago, and keeping diversity in community was always in the forefront of my vision. I'm in an industry where minority and women workers represent less than 10% of the workforce nationally. I'm proud that my firm's minority and female workers are at 38%. Along with this, we have always been passionate about our nonprofit healthcare and educational clients, building for what we believe is important and impacting positive impact on people's lives. So as a community staple, it was important to our team that the local community would not only benefit from the finished project, but also via the dollars used to renovate the building. First, we wanted to use the project as a way to engage local residents in work. Our local resident, Kanata Glanton, served as our project intern. She supported our project manager, Kevin Wise, I think you guys are over here to the right, Greg McRae, raise your hand, um, with many different tasks in our office as well as on site to give her an experience of what it would be like to pursue a career in construction. And I hope that we actually achieve that. We also engage Linden residents as labor's on the job. Nearly 300 hours of labor manpower came from Linden residents. We also pr prioritized, thank you, yeah. Thank you. We also prioritized diversity in our procurement and surpassed the goals for contract dollars. We had a minority business enterprise goal of 21%. We attained 37%. We, thank you. And we had a female business enterprise goal of 5% and we attained 7.7, so almost 8% in female business enterprise dollars. So thank you again. So many of you who know Lyndon well know that we used to be here and part of the story of the Fresh Market and Charitable Pharmacy is the work of the Columbus City Attorney's Office to make sure this property could be used for a better purpose. I'm happy to introduce the person who is continuing to use the office, his office, to improve Lyndon and Columbus City Attorney Zach Klein. Hello, how y'all doing? It's really great to be here on a beautiful day. Uh, and thank you, Terry, uh, and the work that you and your team did in revitalizing this, this beautiful building. Uh, it is a little bit of a, of a phoenix rising out of the ashes, if you're familiar with what was here prior uh, to this great uh, location in Fresh Market and Charitable Pharmacy. Uh, in 2016, this address, 1464 Cleveland Avenue, was synonymous, unfortunately, with violence, uh, with drugs, uh, with gang activity. And I see a lot of folks who live in this neighborhood know exactly what I'm talking about. And it was the effort of my predecessor, I was council president at the time, the effort of my predecessor, uh, Rick Pfeiffer, who was the city attorney in the zone team, uh, that led a nuisance abatement action in the environmental court to shut this place down. So that it gave an opportunity for why we're here today, for the rebirth and having a fresh market uh, and charitable pharmacy. If you're not familiar with the zone initiative, uh, there's five police zones in the city of Columbus. And I have assigned an attorney to each one of those zones. Uh, we're fortunate enough here today to have the lawyer uh, who is assigned to this zone, uh, Chastity Barn. Where's Chastity? Please raise your hand, stand up, give a wave in the back. 
and also Steve Dunbar, uh, who's the section leader of the zone team. This is the most outward. This is the most outward facing portion of the office who work with people like you in the neighborhoods that help identify problem properties that are plaguing communities that are disrupting families' lives that are preventing children from reaching their fullest potential by having to play next to a property like the Eagle Market or live next to a drug house. But it's not enough just to shut a place down. What comes next? What are you gonna do with that structure? And because of the partnerships that we've had today with the private sector, with government leaders, we're able to have the fresh market and charitable pharmacy. It's the best outcome of the zone initiatives work. And the, thank you. And the greatest partnerships that we have. So while the zone initiative is a mechanism to lift up neighborhoods, we can't do it without our partners at city council. And it's my honor to call up a great partner, council member, Rob Dorans. Thank you. Good afternoon, Lyndon. It's been so nice to actually be out and see people on a beautiful day like today. Uh, I want to thank City Attorney Klein for the important work that his office did to, to bring us here, to, here today. Uh, and additionally, there are more markets just like this all across the city that his office are working right now to improve the quality of life for the residents that live next to those markets as well. Um, as you uh, heard earlier uh, from Mayor Ginther, you know, there was a meeting uh, unveiling the One Linden Plan nearly two years ago with our good friend Nick Bankston, who's here. And uh, Ms. Pegg, many of, the, many of our other area commissioners were at that meeting, and I had the exact same interaction that the mayor had with many of those commissioners. This can't be a plan that just sits on a shelf. These can't just be a, a book that no one pays attention to. We need real investments. And I'm proud since that day, uh, nearly a, a week goes by Columbus City Council in which there's not an investment made in the Linden community by the taxpayers of the City of Columbus and Columbus City Council. Uh, over one and a half million dollars uh, Columbus City Council appropriated for this project. And I think it's important when we talk about that investment, you know, we talk about infrastructure, right? It's not just uh, roads and bridges and that kind of thing. Uh, it's human infrastructure. Uh, Taylor and I were just chatting before the event about uh, being able to use that word differently now, not just talking about, you know, again, the traditional ways that we think about it, uh, investing in people, right? Investing in food and healthcare, and that is infrastructure, right? That is how people thrive in their communities. So. When we think about uh, investments that we're making, I, I'm so excited that uh, Columbus and our community it has continued to think broadly about how to make these investments and continue to look at that one Linden plan that so many folks here uh, spent hundreds of hours of their time imparting to us at the city about what they want to see invested in their community, what kind of infrastructure they want to see to benefit the people that live in their communities. Uh, it is my uh, proud honor to serve as the neighborhood's chair at Columbus City Council, which means I get to work with our 21 different area commissions every single day and with Director Carla William Scott of the, De of the Department of Neighborhoods, who is keenly focused on that human infrastructure to make our community a better and more equitable place. Director William Scott. Good afternoon, Lyndon. Good afternoon. I prayed for this great weather. I think my prayers were answered. Adam, if you could tell your brother, I prayed for this and asked him to help me. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Again, thank you, Councilmember Dorans, Mayor Genther, and all of our partners that are here this afternoon. You know, when we first started this, I had the pleasure of serving as the chair of the One Linden Plan Steering Committee four years ago and I had a chance to see this community's pride and vision up close. But the plan was just the first part. A big part of my job as director of the Columbus Department of Neighborhoods is to make sure that the One Linden Plan and our other roadmaps for our communities are implemented. I don't do that alone. I do it with an awesome team who some of them are here. So Department of Neighborhoods team, if you could raise your hand so everybody can see who you are and put some faces to the names. Thank you. We wanted to make sure that this, again, this wasn't a plan that sat on the shelves. And we asked residents what they wanted in their community and their voices are heard. 
I see several of you in the audience that were at a lot of those meetings. And trust me, the people of Linden are not shy about what they want in their community. One of our community's biggest advocates has been at almost every community engagement meeting that we had and has also served a, a decade on the South Linden Area Commission. Since that time, I have the pleasure of calling her my friend and I'm honored to work with Miss Peg Williams. Everybody affectionately calls her Miss Peg. She just finished, a, as I said, a decade long stint on the South Linden Area Commission, but her advocacy stretches back many years. I believe, and I'm almost certain, and Nick, you can probably attest to this, Miss Peg was a member of every single working group that we had as part of the One Linden Plan. <laughs> and she was at every meeting when there were other folks that didn't show up, Miss Peg was always there. Sometimes it was just Miss Peg and Nick and I sitting there, but Miss Peg was always there. She's an amazing force in this city and for this neighborhood, and I am proud to introduce my friend, Ms. Peck. Wow. I was not expecting that. Thank you so much, Miss Carla. And I really do feel humbled. I say thanks to all my fellow colleagues for having accepted me to be a part of the project team. I was near homelessness when a friend of mine introduced me to a realtor who sold me my house. It was important that the location accommodated my chosen lifestyle. Within one to eight blocks radius, I could worship at a church and visit the library. I could keep doctor appointments next door. If my house was on fire, the fire department and emergency medical team was just across the street. Also, some of my socialization needs could be met within a five to eight block radius at the Douglas Park and Recreation Center, Windsor Pool, Rosewind Community Center, or St. Stephen's Community House. However, the strategic selling point was the grocery store nearby. I didn't have to leave the neighborhood in order to buy food. I only had to walk three blocks, three blocks south to this Eagle Market, and I did one day only to discover the product quality was poor, the meat lasted two to three days, and the fruit and the vegetables roughly a little longer than a week. For me, that experience began in 2001 and ended within that same week. Unfortunately, for the many of my Linda neighbors, that experience continued for several years until Eagle Market's eventual closing, as Zach indicated, due to crime. In contrast, Many of my most positive experiences came under the former Greater Linden Development Corporation organizing the annual Linden Litter League competitions beginning in 2007 and hosting South Linden Area Commission, Greater Linden Advisory Council, Greater Linden Business Network, and the Greater Linden Block Watch meetings in which my neighbors and I could express concerns and generate those ideas that were later conveyed in the year-long work groups that led to the One Linden, Our Community, Our Future Plan, which was unveiled in 2018. Equally fortunate were the meaningful relationships built with the people of Linden cemented my permanent residency here within this community. 
Now, with the Linden Fresh Market and Charitable Pharmacy, my neighbors and I will enjoy getting quality food products, free pharmaceutical services, and many additional resources closer to home. While the Fresh Linden Market ends one collaborative dream, it serves as the beginning of another collaborative dream changing the model of economic development that promotes, respects, restores, and supports sustainable community wealth building for black and indigenous people of color. So I stand in this moment acknowledging my North and South Linden area commissioners and the many residents who share I Love Linden vision that reimagines the glory days of the, Lind of the Cleveland Avenue corridor bustling with businesses owned by people who live within the immediate community. Again, I say thanks to everyone who helped me be here. If I start naming all of you, I might end up crying, shedding some tears, because I've seen your faces in the 614 <laughs> for Linden and, and other places, in other spaces, at the Healthy Homes, Healthy Neighborhoods sessions, and as I say, many of the work groups that we participated in in order to make this dream come true. So thanks to everyone who committed their time and effort in making the Linden Fresh Market be a reality. Thank you, Mayor. Give it up for Miss Peg, will you? I oftentimes get asked, why am I so uh, focused? I would say my top three priorities are neighborhoods, neighborhoods, neighborhoods. And some folks get frustrated in this city. Why are you always talking about Linden? Why are you always talking about the hilltop and the south side? This is why. This is why. You look at the pictures of this place and the city attorney and his predecessor spoke to it and acted upon it. $30 million into the Linden Community Center, $20 million into the redesign of Hudson, the Linden Preschool Center and Playground, this investment, downtown Linden, all of the work we're doing in partnership along Cleveland Avenue. Equity is not equality. Equity is not equality. And we stand up for equity and investing in neighborhoods that have been left out and left behind Columbus's success. Because we know we can't reach our full potential as a city and a community until every family in every neighborhood is sharing in our community's success. God bless you. Let's go up here and cut this ribbon.